here. So yeah, it looks like it tried to... That is so bizarre. And it's also going the wrong way. Hmm. But let's take a look. Let's do that again just in case to be safe. Dum 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 dum. So let's look at this cube here. This face. And this node, we can see we've got a linked path node on face. So um, there's a straight wall behind here on this yellow highlighted cube. But check out this linked path node here. <clears throat> this is linked to cube O2, which is this one. Oh dear. And if I look at this node, you can see there's actually three possible path node links. Which is really strange to me. Um, because... Two reasons. It makes sense that there's three nodes overlapping, because we know that there's two at least on this cube, and we can guess that there's... Underbutt. Hey. Sorry. <laughs> and we can guess that there's probably one on the back of this cube here. But it should have thrown all of those out, right? Uh, um, eh? Yeah, I'm still not sure about what's actually happening here. So this node... I think what I'd like to do is I have this clear at the end here. I don't really want to do that. I probably want to clear somewhere else. I think it would be a better idea to clear in my cube core right before I'm telling this validate face, validate linked path to run. Maybe it's in cube faces, validate path nodes. I grab the first and the last path node. If the face is active, then I validate the linked path. Otherwise, I break the path. Maybe when we begin the rotate. So this breaks all of our paths. And I'm just going to make a nice hello. We have a special guest again. Make a nice public function. Hey, hey, come on. Nope. She always likes to go after my frogs. I keep a lot of cute little, like, frog things around. Okay, that's better. So, this is in path node, and it's a public function. Clear possible node list. PPNL clear. So this only clears when we break paths. I'm going to do a shift F12 and see where we call that. I call it in cube core when I deactivate hidden faces.
activate and break all path. Sure, let's let's see let's see how that changes things. Okay. And that's the mesh. What about this node? So this node has two paths. I'm assuming a straight wall on this one and whatever is here or whatever is behind the wall here on this one. But neither of those paths are valid. So let's hop up to path node. And here I hard coded path node list being two. I'm going to change that actually. Let's remove all possible nodes that <laughs> um, have direct neighbors in their faces direction. P and L, possible path node links. Whoa, hey -o. I'm not used to typing with a cat here. You think I would be by now. At node index. Not idex, index. And so let's say if so we have our test node, which is a node on another cube. So we want to take the core of the other cube. We want to shoot array from that core to the face in question. So we'll get the test face, get owning face. So if test face dot get owning Q core dot has neighbor in face direction, test face. Then I think what we're going to do is we want to remove Remove at node index. And this is an interesting little trick here. We don't always want to increment this node index. And I'll give you a quick example why. Let's say, like our current, um, our current error, we have three nodes. And our current index is zero. <clears throat> So we test this one out and we decide, okay, this is bad news. We'll call these nodes A, B, and C. And we, we decide, oh, cool, A is not valid. So we can erase this. But you have to be aware that when you're erasing something from a list, C sharp is automatically going to slide everything down and resize it. So now it has a count of two. So that's a problem. If we erased something and we increment our index to one, that means we're never actually going to check B. And that can be a source of a pretty nasty problem to track down. So 
instead of always incrementing node index, let's only increment node index if we don't remove something from the array. And now I believe we can get rid of all of this. Let's comment it out. That's a fair bit of code. Let's try that out. Pyong. Oh my. <laughs> so it looks like our path traveled. It's hard to see. I broke this path when I was trying to make it prettier. But it looks like our path traveled all the way through here. And that is not what we want. So I think you're going to have to reorganize how our conditionals work. We should put this at the very top before we start to remove links. And this is only possible for intercube transition. And if that happens, we're done and we can return. Um, then we start to loop through all of these things. Okay, let's try that again. Do, 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 do. Doom. Okay, big money. Yeah, that looks right-ish. Yeah, my math is definitely wrong here. <laughs> I tried to be fancy and push the line renderer out. Just to make it look cleaner. I did one other thing. Let's do let's align it to camera view and see what happens then. Yeah, that looks better. Not the best, but better. So it did stop there, but we still have another error, and I wonder if it will... Chunk. Oh, yeah! So it looks terrible. The path looks terrible, but we can see that, okay, it is doing its thing. It is... And the path is connecting. Awesome. So I do believe we fixed that error. So I created this extra txt in uh, in our documents folder called badseeds.txt. And whenever I'm testing something that's randomized or generated in some way, I always like to keep a file that I can document these sort of things in. And once it's done, I can remove that. Not the best bug tracking system, I know. There are actual pieces of software designed for this thing. But I find a text file suffices just fine when I'm working by myself. If I had a group of people, then I'd probably pick some sort of bugzilla type program that would allow me to track and follow bugs. And I also wouldn't be coding for two hours, you know, writing 500 lines of code without any commits on a big project. Well, I don't know. It depends on the feature. In a branch, yeah, that's fine. 
So I'm going to re-randomize our pool, and let's just do a little more testing before we move on to the big kahuna. Oh, that's really funny. <laughs> uh, do I have that in my to-do list? To do, oh, replicatable randomization is done. Uh, make sure that paths can reach the end. This is going to be a fun problem. Not something I'm tackling, but I thought of it, and we're going to need to do it at some point. So you might as well write it down. OK. Ah. <sighs> oh! Is this the problem I was thinking of? Did I stumble upon a scene? Oh, not quite. Ooh, that's even worse, actually. I know. So what happened here is it saw that there were still two nodes overlapping this one right here. And that falls into our else body, where we just set the linked path node to null. It's not quite right. Um, I wonder, is there any way that I can... No, these are only... I want to be able to get both of these paths to connect. Ah, you know what? I think it's time. I guess let's solve this problem first before we go on to the big one. So we get to here. There are two valid path nodes. Wait, are there? What? Oh, oh no, I lost the seed. Ah. Uh. That's interesting that that worked. Hmm. Interesting. Let's inspect here. So this has two possible path nodes. That's right. It's got the right one and then this one here. So how did it pick a node? This time, it went under. Oh my. So it is correct in that this node is touching two different nodes of two faces that don't have any neighbors. But then how does that linked path node get set? Let's watch this and make sure it changes. It does. Okay. So 
So we know that it's got two nodes, so this is going to fail. We know this isn't going to remove anything. Possible links count equals one, match found. Else null. Let's debug. How are we going to test this out, right? Um, because this cube that we're rotating has a whole bunch of faces. But we know that there's only one node that should have two possible links in there. Okay. Debug mode engage. Young punk. Okay. Possible path nodes count zero. Zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. So we have to think of it through the perspective of this node here. And it only has one? Which is this one here. This is the one with two, but <clears throat> okay, so we rotated the yellow cube, and both of these nodes. only have one connection. So I guess it's just the order in which they're calculated, which is not great. We need a better way to determine The drawing board. Ah, there it is. <laughs> so we've got this guy here. But then there's another one under here that goes like so. And this is the one that we're spinning. Oops. And 
this guy here just has a single node that's overlapping both of these paths. I think this is actually boiling down to the same problem that we're going to have to tackle anyway. Which, even more nightmarish, imagine that this cube here had another path on its back, like so. That would mean a Whitling should be able to walk up this face, around, under this face, and on the back of this face here without getting tripped up or tricked. And when we're spinning this cube, it's only this cube's path nodes that are being updated. So if only this cube's nodes are being updated. I think we might actually... So this is the update cube node. And it's pointing to... Or it's overlapping some other cube node. And if the count is different, this is overlapping one, and this is overlapping two, then something's gone wrong. Or we need some extra logic. Not that something's wrong, it's just a trickier problem. What would happen in this case here? So let's call this... We'll call this cube A. And this is a, uh, we'll use B for back and a D for down. And this is cube B and it's got U for up and F for forward. And this forward is this back face here. So, let's see what would happen. Um, B's, uh, same face node, no, same cube node. Ooh, I like that name. B's same cube node is D. It's on D's face. And B is also overlapping. Wait, 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 this is A, B, A lowercase d, this is, it's overlapping B, U, and B, F. What about A, D? Would have the same cube node of A, B? and it would be overlapping the exact same values. So it seems like in this case, this sort of four-way cross where all of these nodes are on top of each other, that every node is going to have two overlaps and then one same cube node.
And we'll just draw it all out to be sure. This looks like absolute rubbish to anybody who would look at the board <laughs> without listening to the... Uh, oh, wait. This is... Oh, One of my episodes, the... The video file got corrupted somehow. So it's just a black screen with me talking. You can hear my voice, you can hear me hitting the keyboard, but not very useful in terms of education. So this is the scenario where F is a path. Let's do the write-out for if F is not a path. So BU would just be overlapping AB and AD. And... Let's see. AB is just overlapping BU, and AD is overlapping the same thing. It is interesting to note that these two are exactly the same, but I don't want that to be the, the test that tells me because the, as you can imagine there's a lot of nodes on these cubes and you don't want to test one node against all the other ones to see if they're overlapping the same single thing so maybe there's a better way to go about doing this Well, there is one striking visual difference, and the thing that really stands out to me is that a dot y, the y position, is very different from b dot y. And so that could sort of give us a hint here, although... This same statement would be true for this setup here. Right? The y's are different. But our connections would be very simple. It's just treating them like they're on a 2D plane, except that 2D plane is like this instead of ground plane, like we normally think of games as having. <sighs> So we could specify this even further and say a dot x b dot x or a dot z does not equal b dot z. And this would make sure that they were, these two cubes were sort of catty corner like this, which is where our final crazy edge case comes in. And I think once we can solve these two problems, um, in theory, it should be fine. Everything should work. But I'm not sure how much I like this here. It's kind of, it seems very basic. There's got to be some maths that we can use to make our life easier and our code cleaner. So perhaps I'll spend a little bit more time thinking about it before I hop back into the development environment and start start hitting the keyboard. What are some other differences? Um, well, this is a pretty big difference. This first observation here. It's that A's node list count is different from B's node list count. But how many other setups are like that?
one possibility. Mm. I mean, this is kind of a valid. This sort of setup only happens when two cubes are catty corner to each other like this. And one solution that I've kind of been mulling over is if I shot a ray out of each face, if those rays crossed, then pick the two faces that the rays crossed. You pick this one, you pick this one. Because if our current set up, if we shot the ray out of the bottom of this one here and out of the top of this one, then the rays would not cross and we would know we could throw out this path here on the bottom of A. The one reason I'm kind of wary about using this is because we're dealing with floating point numbers. And I'm worried that if the cube is even just a slightest bit off, let's check our cube positions. Hey, mouse, hello. There we go. Um, our cube positions are exact. And even when we're rotating stuff around, they're not moving. So as long as our cube positions are exact, we should be OK. Then the math would be fine. So maybe we have a solution. Oof. Oof. Oh no. Oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> I love it when that happens. When I think something terrible has happened, but really everything is okay. I was worried about this setup. So imagine that this cube that we've been talking about doesn't exist. I was worried about this cube here because this cube also has a different Y and this would be true as well. But luckily, these two cubes have exactly zero points that can overlap. We have no corner crossings. Corner crossings. Oh my god. That sounds terrifying. Where is my possible features? Maybe in Whitlings too. <laughs> right? <laughs> this is something if we if we did decide to do corner crossings, now is the time to start writing it. Not later, not in a month or two. Things would have to be already pretty set at that point. Although I guess honestly, I've really only been working on this project for about 10 hours. Maybe a little more. So, eh, corner crossings. That's still a possibility. I'm not sure what it would add to the game, though. How would it make it more fun? There would be more paths. Definitely a lot more paths. I guess the user would have to deal with... Oh.
I guess the, the art would have to look a little bit differently. Because if here is our path, hmm. Maybe a whittling could come and fill out this path and allow two people to allow other whittlings to come and cross on those corners. Oh, wow. That would open up all kinds of crazy stuff. That would mean that there could be paths, or there would need to be paths like this, too, where we come in. From a straight edge, and then we leave on a diagonal edge. Oh my. I like this a lot. This is pretty darn cool. Definitely something that would be introduced in later levels. But if we want our core pathfinding to be as robust as possible, we should start planning for this now. What's really interesting about this setup is that most of our code is still going to work. The only difference, oh, you know, it would be so cute. If our little whittling did like a front flip, and then he jumped from corner to corner. Oh, that would be so adorable. We don't need any bridges to be built. That is darn cool. Oh. You know, this is becoming more and more of a design issue because <laughs> what if this happens oh no <laughs> what's the whittling gonna do i guess just walk straight that's all they can do they're cute dumb creatures Uh, this does add a level of complexity. So if the user rotated this one so it was no longer existing, that would mean that this is a valid path now. Wow, straight lines. So, corner cubes, that is a thing. And it's something I'm going to consider very seriously, actually. So that would mean if we have a cube face here, We would have possible entrances on corners and on sides. And what's interesting is now I would say that the exits are 90 degrees from the entrance. These are all possible blue exits from this blue entrance. Oh boy, and then a yellow here, no, 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 no. A yellow would be able to exit here, here, and then all the way around. I like this, yeah, pretty interesting stuff.
Because it opens up a whole bag of worms. So we've got our corner to corner. And then we've got our L path. So those would not connect. And then we've got a straight path. Those would not connect. But we could have something like this. Oh, that doesn't feel right. It would have to be more like June, 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 June. And then the Whitling could take this path. We go to this corner. Oh, he'd actually go right here, wouldn't he? And here. Interesting thing about these is I am not good at modeling software, and actually, it might be good just to start generating our generating our face meshes soon because we can just use our math to generate these faces. Yeah, I think that's what we're gonna need to do. Oh boy, that was a sidetrack of epic proportions. What did we solve? <laughs> Nothing, we just, just made a whole bunch of more problems for ourselves. No, that's not true. We did solve one or two things. But this is still our issue here. Well, let's try the simplest solution first, and we'll just go from there. We'll see what happens. I don't have too much time left on tonight, unless I, you know, get in the zone and decide to just go ham. So, let's see. See our links. That's not what we care about. We still want to remove all. But even so, this is still a problem. If the count is 1, which is where our cube is rotating, this guy does think that there's only one. So does this guy. So this count equals 1 is not as simple as that. What other things do I have in path node here? Oh, well, we can stop debugging, that's for sure. So let's do a check for Path imbalance. Oh no, wait. Whoop. 
boy. We want to save this number. Add seeds. And this is a three way tie with two nodes on the unspun cube. Yes, that is correct. No more random, use the seed. Double check that we can replicate it. It's been a while since we've even looked at this. <laughs> um, like so. Okay. And that one works fine just because of the order of operations, but now this one goes under. Yes. Good, replicatable, but I like C. So I need to be able to check the count of the path node links of our other node. I'm not sure if I should just put this into, I'm pointing with my finger, um, into this body. But sure, why not? You know, we'll solve it one bug at a time, and then we can collapse it later if we see any, you know, similarities in the code. If I find myself copy pastaing, then it is time to consider a small refactor. So I still just want to grab the other path node. And let's make another accessor function. And call this get possible links count. EPNL count. Okay. I am having a total brain fart. Would this be possible? Private. Only in this class am I calling this function. Other dot. Oh, I already have access to. <laughs> wah, wah. That was pretty silly. Okay. <laughs> So if the others count does not equal one, then print path imbalance time for some ray or I guess it's not even a ray cast because a ray cast takes place in sort of its own unique little box. Um, we're going to have to do time for some line-to-line -line collision. Hopefully we get that nice little message. Path imbalance, time for some line-to-line -line collision. Nice, and we got it on both of the nodes in question, which is very good.
And you know what? This doesn't even have to be line to line collision. Well, I guess technically it's line to line collision, but because we're dealing with um, the core axis, you know, we're not, we're always aligned on X, Y, and Z somehow, then maybe. So who gets to pick the target position? Other's face gets to pick the target's position. Dot face transform position. Uh, we're going to need the other face as a variable. Oh, that's not what I want to do. We've got the other face. Uh, we've got a vector three face direction. And we're going from the core of the cube to the face. So I'm going to say other face transform position minus other face dot owning cube or core. I'm going to rename this actually. No, no. Control minus, go back to where you were. So this will draw a line from the core to the face. Let's rename this. And then we can normalize that face, which would make it a unit length of one. So let's do a side view here. So here's our core. Here's our face position. We're drawing this line. And because our cubes are one unit in size, that would mean that this line is 0 0.5. By normalizing a line, that means that we shrink or extend it to be exactly one unit in length. That's all normalization does. And that means if we take this new direction and we add it to the cube core position, we, we can do the same for the other two faces of this cube, right? Because these are the two path nodes that we're not sure where to go. So we calculate that direction, we'd normalize it, add that direction to center of the cube, and whichever one come whichever one comes up with the same answer, that is the face that's connected to this node. Ooh, buddy. So I see myself drawing three lines. That means we're going to have to perform this calculation three times. So let's extract it into its own private function. Naming it. This is going to be fun. Private. Should it return void? We want it to it should return a vector three, right? It should return a position. Get point above base.
let's make that a little bit, let's give it a, some documentation here. Um, this takes the direction from the cube to the face, normalizes that direction, adds the direction to the cube position, and returns the result. Used for imbalanced path node instances. <laughs> I always like to name things result when I can. Makes me happy. Actually, let's just make this a vector 3.0. Return result. Let's count let's store the cube core as well. Ah, because this script is named cube core. Let's rename this again. Get owning cube core. <laughs> and we'll call this core. And I guess we don't even need a result. We can just return core transform position plus face direction. Ooh, above is not the right word. Let's do get point extended from face. Because to me, above always implies that it's going to be on the positive y. And that is not the case here. So vector three, other extended point. And the cube face I am testing is other get owning face. Um, I'm going to add an assert here, <laughs> because I'm totally worried. Uh, I'm going to assert r equal, expected is to other ppn, count there is a severe imbalance in this cube's path nodes I do believe that this assertion is going to arise at some point in the future so I just like to be notified of when it does happen so I can write that seed down and figure out what's going on because we are solving one particularly nasty problem
But the true solution might be something very different than what we've done so far. So we'll have a point A, which is zero, and a point B, which is the other possible path node that other thinks it found. Um, let's do this so we don't have to calculate it twice. Oh, node A, node B. And I haven't written this link nodes yet, but I've done it. I've already linked a couple of nodes many times. And if this happens, log error, there was a floating point error when handling path imbalances. Because remember, in a float, 1.0001 is different from 1.000001. Two completely separate numbers to the machine. Wait a minute. Simple, right? <laughs> now they're linked to each other. <laughs> I feel like I've been doing some silly stuff over here. Oh boy, I forgot what code was there. Oh, control minus, let's go back. They're linking other and this. Okay. Ooh, oh boy, that worries me a lot. Oh, nice. We've already got a floating point error when handling path imbalances. Sweet. Oh. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> What's happening? Oh, boy. Oh, dear.
Oh, man. That just didn't work at all. I didn't even spin this one yet. Path imbalance. No runtime errors. Huh, okay. Yes! One problem solved! <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, 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 it's, whoa, whoa. Whoa, that was unpleasant. <laughs> well, chums, it looks like we have solved a single imbalance problem. But somehow we just generated another. Oh, hey. And that will end there. Okay. So why do you, buddy? You have two path nodes. This one, which belongs to the right face, which is the face that is hidden. This totally should have removed that. Oh, no. Because... This is this comes down to the who is rotating problem again. <clears throat> so there are two path nodes here. We're spinning it this way, which means that two path nodes enter this guy right here. Separately. And this guy's face is up. But this guy's face is like this way. Hmm. Well, I think this might be a decent place to end it. I don't want to make another giant long video. We got some stuff done. We were able to, so this three-way tie, this is fixed, but there's a new error. And that is
how would I describe this? Um, node that should be disabled is still being checked. Okay, well, that's it for me today. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you had some fun. Hopefully, um, I would very much like to be able to get those corners in. I think that was a very neat idea. So, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.